Aquaculture products are occupying an increasingly important place on our tables. Most of the trout, carp, salmon, sea bass and sea bream that now land on our plates come from fish farms. It has long been rare for oysters and mussels picked in the wild to be consumed. Aquaculture is a sector that is growing apace. Globally, production has increased by more than a third since 2000, exceeding 60 million tonnes. But this trend has largely been driven by Asia and South America, whereas production in Europe has remained static at slightly over 1 million tonnes for the past decade. The European Commission addresses this stagnation in its new strategy for aquaculture. The objective of this uh, strategy is basically to analyse what are the bottlenecks that are preventing European aquaculture from really meeting its full potential and trying to address and find solutions to resolve those bottlenecks so that European aquaculture can unlock its full potential. One of the principal bottlenecks identified by the European Commission is the problem of access to space and water. Take, for example, this Cypriot sea bass and sea bream farm, which has been experiencing this problem for some years. It's located on the southern Cypriot coast off the new port of Limassol. Although it has developed commercially so that it can export its fish to Israeli and Russian markets, all applications to expand have been refused by the local authorities. This is a problem experienced not only with intensive aquaculture. Extensive traditional aquaculture also frequently has to fight to preserve its ponds. Each time we need to enlarge a site, we have problems because some member states' legislation does not include aquaculture. The rules and laws for the allocation of space have been set up with other types of activities in mind, but not for aquaculture. And aquaculture needs access to the sea. To provide aquaculture with the space it needs, certain national or local authorities have launched land use plans. We're in Normandy on the western coast of Cotentin, where oyster and mussel farming is a flourishing activity. But this activity calls for large spaces on land. Many activities must be undertaken on terra firma. A large number of tanks are needed to store, prepare and purify the shellfish. Oyster bed worker Joseph Costa shows us one of the new sites used for this type of installation. Here you see a brand new site with a road that gives access to each portion and a channel bringing water to each basin. This site has been achieved at considerable effort as the expansion of Normandy shellfish farming is faced with a problem that is now typical. It's all about competition with other sectors such as tourism. We're now also in competition with people who are still very young, but who want to spend their retirement on the coast and need space to settle down. And we're also in competition with environmental protection. Well, we're not really in competition, but we have to live with it. This region has a preserved coastline and hinterland that the public authorities must protect, while at the same time resolving problems of competition for space. This is why France has opted to promote spatial planning, drawn up by local authorities in conjunction, more importantly, with all the local players. Allowing unfettered access to mussel beds will destroy the seashore and only benefit the fish farmers. But if we manage to gather the associations, professionals and politicians concerned around the same table to decide upon the best place to position these access points, this will create a coherent policy and in turn will guarantee the environmental protection we need. For some years now, the European Union has been urging consultation with local players when the planning, essential for a more densely populated European coastline, is undertaken. Let's change location and go to Denmark, where the search for space and quality water also involves the development of technology. We are in Jutland, a region renowned for its many rainbow trout farms. Here, a third of the farms have already abandoned their old open circuit tanks and converted to the recirculation system. Here, the water no longer comes from the river, but from the groundwater. 
The tanks are therefore fed by water, whose quality and temperature remain constant summer and winter. But the innovative feature is that there is a mini purification plant at the end of each tank, which treats the water. These are small plastic parts which bacteria stick to. These bacteria transform all kinds of aquaculture waste into fresh water in which fish can live. They transform organic matter such as ammonium and ammonia, which are toxic for fish. Once purified, the water passes through a highly complex system of pipes and is recirculated to the many tanks on this farm, ensuring the best possible water quality for growing trout. Here, just 10% of the water is replaced in each cycle and the water used is treated before it's fed into the river. In a country with very strict environmental legislation, this technological development has become a virtual necessity and benefits from public grants partially funded by Europe. There are genuine benefits. The amount of space in which we produce fish nowadays is three times smaller than before. And, and back then we used to produce half as many fish. These advantages largely offset the major disadvantage with this technology, its energy cost. The result is that recirculation is now widely supported by the Danish Professional Association, which sees it as a source of profit for each and every fish farmer. Of course, it's also a benefit that he can be allowed to produce more, because the limitation is how much, uh, how much uh, does he pollute, and, and he is only allowed to send a certain amount of uh, substances to the environment, and if he can treat more, he can produce more. To find quality water and space, another solution is to move away from the populated coastline. Some farmers, such as in this salmon farm off Clue Bay on the Western Irish coastline, have decided to install their cages further from the coast in areas which are clearly more exposed. It would be, uh, it would be a lot more high, kind of heavy duty, and because <clears throat> we have a lot of heavy swells, not here, maybe 10 meter swells at times. So you have to be, and like it'd be heavy ropes, heavy cages, and uh, large boats, and not for working out. And our nets would be a special thing to set up by ourselves. Not. The advantage is the water, which is constantly replenished by the currents. The disadvantage is that the costs for this infrastructure are higher than for a conventional farm in the shelter of a fjord or creek. And these costs must be passed on to the market one way or another. It is a different business than the mainstream uh, commodity salmon production. So we're producing here in this farm, we're producing organic salmon, uh, for which we get a premium in the market. And the quality is particularly good because it is so far out at sea and there's strong currents, fish has to swim a lot and it's a less fat fish. So it, it is a different product and on the basis of that we can also differentiate it in the marketplace. Moving to more exposed ocean areas is an option often considered in Europe. But this means not only that technological progress must continue, but also that the sector needs to provide its investors with greater certainty and clearer rules that will foster this. We need uh, licenses that are of a sufficient length of time. At the moment, some licenses are only three years, and it's impossible to use that as tenure for borrowing or, or finance. The public authorities, therefore, have an essential role to play in order to help European aquaculture not only to find new areas, but also to increase its competitiveness supporting research and development. The aquaculture specialists whom we see here have met to set up a new research platform so that they can define their needs jointly, be they in terms of improvements in ocean farming, investigating new species or reducing the environmental impact. For this, European aquaculture clearly needs new political impetus. The European Commission is proposing to set a vision for a future of the development of the sustainable aquaculture. What we propose is based on three main objectives. First of all, promoting the competitiveness. Secondly, to encourage the sustainability, but also, thirdly, to improve the governance, which will mean also to raise a bit of the image of such a sector, which is almost unknown to people. As a sector, Aquaculture now makes an essential contribution to nutrition globally.
since fishing, no matter how productive, cannot meet the demand from consumers. The new strategy seeks to enable European Union farmers to join in this global trend and respond to consumer demand.